Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the oasis of freedom on this gorgeous, soon to be beautiful sunset uh, here on Saturday, December 4th, 2021. And, uh, so we're going to kind of have a special edition uh, Apocaloptimistic Hopium Roundup. We're, we're going to give this whole uh, whole edition one story. And I want to thank our old friend Book Hermit, our old contrarian doomer friend Book Hermit, for alerting me to this story that uh, <laughs> we are saved. The planet is saved Guys, all of this stuff about, uh, you know, ocean plastic uh, and all of this, we have got to get more plastic into the ocean. Obviously, we have not. The only way at this point to save the ocean is to dump more plastic into it. So I don't, so this looks good, guys, for the 21st century. We should have four times as much of uh, this good news in the year 2050 is now, but uh, thank you, Book Hermit, for alerting me to this. I need to let you need to go uh, get your squirrelies like that. All right, right here, many versions of this. This is NBC News's coverage of, uh, of, of this story, this, uh, <laughs> just when you thought, you, you know, it's, it, it's never over. It is not over to the fat lady sings. <clears throat> Here we go, guys. We are saved. Time to go back to sleep. Take that uh, single-use plastic bottle, throw it in the ocean, and save the planet. NBC News. An island has emerged. Coastal species discovered thriving thriving on the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, scientists say. All right, coastal marine species carried out to sea on debris are not only surviving, they are colonizing the high seas and making new communities on the floating plastic detritus that makes up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Scientists writing in the journal Nature Communications report coastal plants and animals are sustaining themselves and even reproducing in the garbage patch. An accumulation of trash stuck in ocean currents that is estimated to be about twice the size of Texas. Scientists have documented more than 40 coastal species clinging to plastic trash, including mussels, barnacles, and shrimp-like amphipods, said Greg Ruiz, a senior scientist with the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center and author of the report. Scientists have known that coastal species could catch rides out to sea on logs, and sea wood in the past, but those materials would quickly disintegrate and become a one-way ticket to nowhere. But not anymore. We have plastic to replace the, you know, natural, uh, natural rafts. Researchers were shocked to find that plastic debris is now allowing plants and animals to take up residence in the middle of nowhere and that the open ocean provides enough food to sustain them. There's that word sustain again. Said Ruiz, quote, it's almost like a new island has emerged adding that the new habitat, quote, represents a paradigm shift of what we thought was possible, close quote, yes. The finding raises questions about how these communities function, how they develop, 
and what implications they have for the movement of invasive species. Yes, the findings echo discoveries that forced scientists to reconsider how some forms of life survive on the open ocean. The 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan rattled the country and sent a pulse of trash, much of it plastic, into the Pacific. About 18 months later, debris began to wash up on the shores of North America, dotting Hawaii, Oregon, and Washington with debris carried by ocean currents. What scientists found in that debris shattered old conceptions. So this is for all of you thinking about some uh, radiation release from, uh, you, you know, from that tsunami. This is the stuff that was washing up all over, uh, you, you know, everywhere else. So what did they find? 18 months uh, later, coastal ecosystems are more productive. They are richer with food and nutrients than the open ocean. Hmm. Pr quote, prior to this, we thought many of those coastal organisms would not be able to persist for a long period of time in, in a less food-rich area, let alone grow and reproduce. Much to our surprise, a lot of coastal organisms were alive on that plastic debris, close quote. Nearly 300 species landed on the shores of the Pacific Northwest, according to a peer-reviewed 2017 article published in Science. Analysis of trash from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch further surprised scientists. Yes, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch first caught public attention in 1997 after yachtsman Charles Moore sailed through the remote ocean waters and documented toothbrushes, soap bottles, and fishing nets floating past. Uh, the patch results from ocean currents swirling in a vortex and leaves trash captured in their center. It is one of several plastic collecting ocean gyres. A study published in 2018 estimated that the Great Pacific Garbage Patch contained at least 79,000 metric tons of plastic, including items like fishing nets, plastic bottles, and tiny fragments called microplastics. Trash from the Japanese tsunami has also collected in the patch. Uh, Ruiz and others partnered with the Ocean Voyages Institute, which sailed to the patch and collected trash before photographing, preserving, and shipping it to researchers. Multiple generations of coastal species were found in the debris. Some were producing larvae or young. The scientists found that a mix of coastal and open ocean species have now joined together on the plastic, creating something entirely new. We have an entirely new, sustainable, thriving ecosystem on planet Earth in the year 2021 called the Pacific Garbage Patch. Yes, quote, it is clear there is a merger of two different communities, Ruiz said. Yes, the researchers don't know how these species will interact or what it will mean. They do suspect it could cause changes to the food web. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, other questions will take years to answer. Could coastal species evolve to be more suited to their new habitat on plastic rafts in the remote ocean? Quote, 
the rate of evolutionary change could be quite rapid, Ruby said. We don't know the answer for the organisms in the garbage patch. Certainly, the potential is there. Yes, the proliferation of plastics on land along with more frequent and intense coastal storms because of climate change could send more waste into the ocean, creating additional habitat. There you go. Yes, of course, the islands of plastic could also become temporary waste stations that harbor invasive species only to spit them out as currents shift and send them floating away to islands or shorelines that don't often receive hideaways from other coast. Quote, the more invasions you have, the more likely you will have a species come in that is impactful, Rui said. Uh, anyway, several versions on this, and then they have this next version. Plants and animals found living on giant plastic island. Yes. Uh, there you go. Many versions. Uh, a good uh, thing. Uh, all right, and then of course we have these killjoys in the next article uh, talking about uh, that anyone reading this is good news. It is not a good thing, the paper's authors say. Oh, shut up. Yes, Sounds like a good thing to me. If Book Hermit says it's a good thing, it is a good thing. We're not going to throw water on this party by explaining why. Uh, <laughs> just go ahead and enjoy your apocaloptimism and your hopium while you still can. But I'm going to get out there and enjoy a sunset margarita. Uh, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, civilization on this spectacularly gorgeous weekend in the end times, heading to 80 degrees in the oasis of freedom tomorrow. I'm sure the red tides and the algae blooms and everything else are going to have a heyday. I'm sure the red tides will be colonizing the... Uh, <laughs> the islands of garbage. Get out there and uh, delude yourself that uh, <laughs> 80,000 tons of garbage floating around in, in the Pacific Ocean is a good thing. I honestly don't know if, uh, if, if Book Hermit uh, is being ironic when he's insinuating that this is a good thing, that this is good news. Uh, Anyway, but you just keep on creating those new ecosystems, humans. <laughs> it's a strange world we live in. On, in, under. Bye, guys.